Hello, internet. Um, I recently had the experience of working with some high school art students virtually. Um, they sent me some questions about my work, my process, and about careers in the arts. Um, so I thought that I would make a version of some of those answers just to share with my general audience. Maybe there are some of you out there that would be uh, interested in what I had to say. What is your favorite and least favorite part of creating a new piece? Um, I think my favorite part of the process is about halfway through a painting, um, when I've set up my preliminary drawings, I have the, everything kind of planned out and I have an idea of what I'm doing um, and I've just started to paint. Um, so I've already made some of the difficult decisions about what I think I wanna do, but the piece still has a lot of unrealized open-ended potential. Um, I really like the openness and exploration of that stage of a painting. Um, one of my least favorite things is when the model I need for a particular project is someone I don't know very well. Um, for my work, I shoot a lot of photographs of models to work from as my reference material. Um, often I work with friends and people that I know well, but um, sometimes I need to hire someone that I don't know very well. I'm an introvert. Uh, I'm not a really natural people person. Um, so working to shoot reference photos with somebody that I'm not uh, that familiar with feels awkward to me. Um, I think it's probably good for me to get out of my comfort zone like that, but it does definitely make me nervous. What is your general message that you want to convey with your artwork? In its simplest form, my message is you are not alone. Um, my work is about emotions, and even if our specific experiences are different, we all experience the same basic fundamental emotions. So I hope people can recognize a shared experience or a sense of feeling seen or acknowledged when they connect with one of my pieces. What is your favorite emotion to work with? One of my favorite emotions to explore in my paintings is rage. I think in our society, anger or rage um, is an emotion that women in particular are socialized not to show as much in an outward way. Um, and it's one that throughout my life, I've felt sort of personally disconnected from expressing. Um, so showing it in my work is a way of processing and exploring that emotion for me. I also think that showing women who have loud or contorted emotional expressions in some of my work is a way of defying the traditional male gaze in artwork and media that wants to show women um, only in a certain appealing or decorative way within a narrow range of what's acceptable. What inspired you to start being an artist? Um, for as long as I can remember, art was my favorite activity, uh, my favorite subject in school, my favorite thing to do in my free time, really just more than anything else. Um, I was a good student in other subjects in school, but when it came time to decide what to continue studying and um, what I wanted to do with the rest of my life, I really um, just couldn't imagine doing anything else with my life. How did you make your work unique and different so that you could stand out? I think the goal for any artist is to figure out what their personal voice is and refine it. Um, and it's an ongoing process that can take a long time. It's definitely not something that happens overnight. Someone's voice as an artist, it's the combination of their method for making art, the visual style of their work, um, their subject matter, their personal viewpoint, um, and the concept or message within their work. Um, I'm 36 now and I've been studying and working as an artist in some capacity in my whole life, but it's only in maybe the past five years or less that I feel like I have more of a well-defined personal voice as an artist that I'm confident in. Um, it's a process that can be faster or slower depending on the particular artist, and it's something that will continue to evolve over time. Um, so it's partially a natural, organic process of living and working and trying a lot of different things. And then there's also um, consciously editing out what doesn't work or fit in with the rest or what doesn't feel true or authentic personally.
What made you choose watercolor over any other media? When I was growing up, I tried a lot of different mediums. Um, I didn't necessarily have one favorite, um, and I actually wasn't very interested in watercolor specifically. When I went on to art school, my second year there, I took a few different classes at the same time that had me trying watercolor, uh, and something just clicked for me. Um, I realized I had previously had some misconceptions about what watercolor looked like and that I was wrong. Um, I think I mistakenly thought of it as pastel and dainty, which I wasn't really interested in. And then I realized when I tried it more and I saw a wider variety of work that had been done in watercolor that it can be really uh, bold and expressive. Um, I just, I really love the chaos of watercolor and how it's alive and moving on the paper when it's wet. Um, and it creates all kinds of organic and accidental things that I didn't necessarily plan. Um, I also really like the process of layering watercolor to create different colors and values. It just sort of makes sense, I think, with the way um, I think and the way I build an image. Um, so once I had that experience, um, from that point on, I just decided to stick with it as my main medium. It's pretty much all I do now. What is your favorite piece you've done and why? Um, it's really hard to pick one favorite and it probably changes all the time. Um, but Rift that I painted in 2017 um, is one of my favorites because it's one of the first successful pieces I did in my current style after a really long period of searching and experimentation. Um, it's a self-portrait and the emotions in it are very personal. Um, I was coming out of a period of time where I felt really frustrated with my career um, and a lot of other things in my life were in flux as well. Um, and I wanted to express the feeling of showing the world a calm exterior, even though inside I felt a lot of turmoil. Um, it's a piece that really helped me define my direction as an artist moving forward. Um, from that point on, uh, I felt like I had a clearer idea of uh, what style and what subject matter I wanted to pursue, and I felt a lot more confident in my work. I also think that other people responded to it. Um, I think that they uh, recognized the emotion and the experience I was sharing and felt something similar. How has your practice changed over time? I would sum it up as becoming more proactive rather than reactive. Um, and I think that applies both to the business aspects of being an artist and the artistic aspects. Um, it was a shock at first going from the structure of school to learning to manage my own career and essentially running a small business. Um, I had to learn how to structure my own time and balance all the different things I needed to do um, to make income with my work. Uh, so over time, um, I've gone from feeling like I was running a business by trial and error to having a lot more structure and planning. Um, with my artwork itself, when I started out, um, I had much less of a consistent voice or style as an artist. Um, I tried out a lot of different things that I thought might work for different illustration clients or that might sell, um, but I kind of had the process backwards. Um, I was thinking more about what I thought other people wanted or expected instead of what I was best at as an artist and what I wanted to say as an artist. Um, finding more of a unique personal voice uh, and throwing out what doesn't fit um, has actually led to both greater business success and greater happiness as an artist than trying to figure out what I think other people want from me. How much of your own life and personal experiences can we see in your work? Um, everything has a personal element even when it doesn't seem like it on the surface. Because I'm bringing my own way of seeing things to every painting, um, and when I'm expressing emotions in my work, it is about, it's about my experience or my interpretation of that emotion, even if it's a painting of someone else. 
um, or of a character or an archetype that's symbolic rather than uh, directly being a self-portrait. What is the best way to structure a human face or head? Um, so there are a few different ways to approach this. Uh, one approach is more analytical, which tries to break down the head into a generalized or idealized set of proportions and shapes that you can memorize. Um, another approach is more strictly observational, where you're looking at a model from life um, and it almost doesn't matter if it's a human model, a still life, or a landscape there in front of you, but you're trying to practice the hand-eye coordination of transcribing accurately what you see in front of you, either through loose gestures or through a contour line. Um, I think most people who deal with the portrait realistically have at least some familiarity with both approaches, um, and they might combine the two together uh, and you might also have a preference for one or the other, um, even if you're working with a photo reference rather than a live model, uh, or you're practicing learning to draw um, the figure or the portrait out of your head from your imagination, um, those two types of practice um, can really inform that and I think is a good jumping off point. Um, and I think it still applies even if your goal is to do work that is more stylized, like um, anim an animation style or a comic book style or uh, an abstraction of the face. Um, I think having that grounding point of um, studying both the sort of fundamental proportions of the head as well as practicing um, drawing from life, from observation um, can really help you. What do you think are the pros and cons of being an artist? Um, so the best part to me of being an artist is that I get to spend time every day or at least every week um, doing what I enjoy more than anything, which is painting. Um, it's also extremely rewarding when I hear from people who see my work that it holds some personal meaning for them. Um, that, that really feels good. Um, I also enjoy being my own boss and that my work sometimes lets me travel to new interesting places um, or have adventures that I never expected. Um, for example, when I got to go to NASA Goddard and do paintings of the James Webb Space Telescope. Um, the hardest part of being an artist is actually having to run a business, um, which involves a very different set of skills from actually making art. Um, the business tasks and having to make money also sometimes feels like a distraction from the actual art. Um, and it can be emotionally difficult to sometimes feel like my value as an artist or even as a person um, is tied to how much people like my work or how financially successful my work is. Um, I think it's important to keep those things separate. I don't think that those things are necessarily true, but um, it's easier said than, said than done. <laughs> what advice would you give students considering a profession in the arts? Um, so a few things. Um, one is always be committed to your practice of making art regularly, no matter what else happens. Um, but in every other aspect of having a career or a business as an artist, be flexible. Um, I think it's a pretty common experience for artists to start out envisioning um, a fairly specific niche for themselves within the art world. Um, and then over the course of their time as a student um, and the early years of their career to end up uh, on a completely different path than they initially envisioned, um, where they're still making art. Um, but the specifics of what their work looks like or how they're making a living from it has changed and adapted um, based on what they realized they were best at or what opportunities crossed their path. Um, for example, the thing that you think you dream of doing, uh, whether that's maybe uh, making comics or doing concept art or doing a particular um, style of work, uh, you may love that, but then when you actually start uh, pursuing it and, and learning what's involved in that particular niche of art making, you may actually find that um, your talents as an artist um, are better suited to something else entirely and that the type of work you enjoy making most 
um, is different than what you sort of um, grew up imagining you would do with your art. Um, so I think it's important to be uh, open to that process that you are, um, you're committed to making art and to evolving as an artist, but where you land as an artist in particular um, might be different. Um, I would also say that if you're going to be a self-employed artist, which many artists, that's what many jobs in the art world end up being, um, be open to combining a number of different methods for making income from your work and for promoting your work. Um, for example, right now, my business includes selling original paintings and prints of the work that I generate myself that I want to be doing, um, doing portrait commissions for private collectors, uh, doing illustration work for companies, teaching workshops, uh, and running a Patreon. Um, so I have a certain um, style and subject matter that I like to focus on, but within that I do uh, all of those different things um, to put them all together and make a living. Um, and when it comes to the ways in which I sell my work, uh, I make sales through my own website and social media, um, through working with galleries and by going in person to conventions and shows, or at least I was doing that um, when there wasn't a pandemic. Um, the pandemic also highlights how important it is to have multiple income streams within your business as an artist because you never know when something out of your control will make one of them not viable for a period of time. Um, so if you're doing multiple things, then if one thing doesn't work out, you can always um, focus more on the others. Um, another piece of advice I would give you is that um, as an artist, realize that your education is never over. Um, even when you're done with your formal education, there are so many resources now to learn about making art um, and about the business of art. So keep taking workshops, um, listening to podcasts, reading books, uh, and most importantly, um, studying what other artists of all different ages are doing. Um, don't just study the most famous or well-established artists in your field. Um, but also your peers. Uh, and as you get older, um, don't forget also that you can learn from people who are younger than you since they're gonna be the most familiar with new emerging technologies. Um, I'm always looking to artists who are younger than me um, to understand how to do social media well. Um, lastly, and perhaps most importantly, um, remember that your heart and your soul as an artist is different from your career or your business as an artist. Um, an artist is someone who is dedicated to making art. Um, having a career in art isn't always the easiest or the most stable. Um, and many, if not most artists, do have times in their lives when they may also have another job that's not related to art. Um, or they may make the decision that they don't want to have to rely on their art to be the thing that they make their living off of because it, it takes the um, joy and the passion away for the, from them. Um, and they would rather do something else to make a living but also still be an artist. Um, all of those things are valid. Um, not making 100% of your financial living from your art does not make you less of an artist. Making and sharing your art is what makes you an artist.